Please be seated. The court is now back in session. And before we proceed to hear the testimony of these witnesses, we will now issue our oral ruling on the request for the protective measure made by a witness through TCW944. The chamber grants the request for protective measures made by the witness through TCW944 which was made through WISU. Detailed information on the address of the witness shall not be broadcasted to the public. The image of the witness shall not be disclosed to the public. In order to implement this protective measure, The image will be distorted during the hearing of the testimony of this witness. A recent decision will be issued in due course. The AV unit is instructed to proceed with the facial distortion of this witness during this hearing. President, Mr. Witness, what is your name? Witness, my name is Srey Thorn. President, what is your date of birth? Answer. I was born in 1957. Question, what is your current occupation? Answer, currently I'm a rice farmer. Question, what are your parents' names? My Parents, my father is Tui Ngal and my mother is Tui Chim. Question, what is your wife's name and how many children do you have together? Answer, my wife's name is Long Won and we have five children. President, the Krafji, could you deliver a document D125 129 to the witness and ask the witness to confirm the highlighted portion of this statement, whether it is uh, true and correct? President, is the address mentioned in the document is uh, correct? And uh, yes, uh, that is correct. President, uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. As reported by the graphic, to your best knowledge, you do not have any relatives or any family members, ancestors or descendants or your in-laws who are recognized by the as civil parties in this case. Is this information correct? Answer, yes, it is. 
question, have you taken an oath? Answer, yes, I have. President, you are now informed of your rights and obligations as a witness before this court. As a witness to the proceedings before this court, you may refuse to respond to any uh, question or request for your comments that would incriminate yourself. That is your right against self-incrimination, meaning it's because of your response or comment that you may be led to prosecution. As for the obligations as a witness to the proceedings before this court, you must uh, respond to all the questions put to you by the bench or by any of the parties, except where your response to such questions or your uh, comments would incriminate you, as I uh, mentioned earlier regarding your right against self-incrimination. Also, as a witness, you must tell the truth that you have known, have heard, have remembered or have experienced or observed personally any events that are related to the questions put to you by any other parties on the bench. Mr. Witness, do you understand your rights and obligations? Answer, yes, I do. Thank you. And Mr. Witness, have you testified before or have you been interviewed by the OCIJ? And if so, how many times and where it happened? Answer. To my recollection, I have testified on two or three separate occasions, but I cannot recall the date. Question. And can you recall where you testified? Answer, it happened at my home. President, thank you. And before your appearance uh, before the chamber, had you read or reviewed the written records of your uh, previous interviews that were conducted at your house in order to refresh your recollection? Answer, yes, I have. Question, and to your knowledge and recollection, can you inform the chamber whether the statements that you have reviewed reflect or where the, 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 your statements or whether they are consistent with your statements that you made with the investigators at your house? Answer, yes. Question. It's... It seems that now you have a, a duty a council assigned by Visu per your request. Have you taken any consultation with your UT council? Answer, yes, I have consulted with my UT council. President. Uh, that is a good thing that you have uh, consulted with your duty council. And of course, from time to time, you may seek a consultation uh, with your duty council during your testimony if you think the question uh, may lead yourself to self-incrimination if you uh, respond or make comment to that uh, question. The right to respond to the questions is yours. However, you should refuse only to respond to the questions when you think that your response would uh, lead to uh, self-incrimination.
secondly, in order to uh, clarify the, the matters, you are reminded that you must respond to all the questions posed to you by the parties or the bench. And if you don't know the response, or you don't know about the events that you were asked, please say so. Because when you say you don't know, that is also a response. Are you clear on that, Mr. Witness? And so, yes, yes, I understand it. President, pursuant to Rule 91B of the internal rules, the co-prosecutors are given the floor first to put the questions to this witness. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, uh, Mr. Witness. I'm going to start with some questions uh, relating to the period from 1973 to 1976 when you were a, a district, district soldier in Tramcock District. Um, and in your OCIJ interview, D-125-129, uh, at the start, you indicate that you became a Khmer soldier in late 1973 and that you fought Law Knoll soldiers as part of Regiment 13. And my first question for you is whether you were involved in the combat with Law Null forces when Ang Tassam uh, was captured by the Khmer Rouge. In 1973, I was a district soldier, and by late 1973, I moved into uh, the sector army and uh, the, the so-called Khmer Rouge uh, uh, command, and that was in uh, regiment 21, and I cannot recall which division uh, it was uh, under at the time. And that uh, what happened uh, during uh, 1973. And in 1975, when the Khmer Rouge attacked Phnom Penh, I moved to Regiment 13 of Division 210, rather Division 3. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we get to um, April 1975, uh, do you remember uh, the anything in regards to the capture of Ang Tassam. I cannot recall that. Now, in um, your first OCIJ statement D-125-129, at Khmer ERN 00224788, English 00231673 through 74, and French 00234574 seven four through seven five you stated that you were in Takao provincial town on the 17th of April 
1975 prepared for combat that the provincial town fell the following day, that is the 18th of April, and you then described what you saw at the time as follows, and I quote, I saw the Lawn Knoll soldiers raise white flags requesting to surrender. I saw, continuing later, I saw fully armed Khmer Rouge soldiers order the people to leave toward the west along National Highway 22 up until 5 p.m. when it became quiet, end of quote. My first question, follow-up question is, what was done with the Lon Nol soldiers who surrendered in Takao Provincial Town? Lunar soldiers who were leaving the Takai provincial town were sent to the cooperative in Tramco district. Were any of the Lawn Knoll soldiers or officials, in particular high ranking ones, arrested during that period. I didn't know uh, about that. Do you know a site that was called Office 204 that was located in Pre Kaduk? in the northwest corner of Tramcock District. No, I don't. I'm going to skip ahead in time for just a moment here um, and refer you to uh, interview E319.1.25. Uh, Mr. President, um, perhaps at this time um, for ease, uh, could I provide a copy to the witness and his counsel of all three of his OCIJ statements so that he has them uh, if he wishes to refer with your leave? Yes, that you can do so. Now, um, the statement I'm referring to uh, Mr. Witness is in your third statement, which is E319.1.25, at answer number 13, where you stated, quote, after leaving Krang Tachan, I was sent to Prey Kuduk and then to many other places, but all within the southwest zone, end of quote. Um, can you tell us uh, when you sent, were sent to pray Kuduk, were you assigned to an office called Office 204? And if not, what was it that you were assigned to do in pray Kuduk? When I was uh, transferred from uh, Counter Chant, I actually returned to my former division, but I was not transferred to Prague do it. In fact, I, was, uh, I returned to my previous regiment 
under Division 210. Are you saying then that at no time did you work in the area of Prey Kaduk or work near an office called Office 204? I never worked there. I want to ask you uh, some questions, further questions about the events uh, immediately following 17 April 1975. Uh, we've heard a testimony in this trial uh, from a witness, uh, Kao Chandera, and in his uh, testimony, uh, OCIJ statement E3 slash 5153 at English 00205090, Khmer 00172044, and French 00205095, uh, this witness described how evacuees were gathered at a pagoda called Wat Champa in Tapem Commune after 17 April 1975. And he estimated, and I quote, 70% of the incoming evacuees at the Wat Champa Center were killed at Krang Tachan, Krabe Pre. Office 160 and Office 204, end of quote. Can you tell us whether evacuees or new people in Tramcock District were gathered at Wat Champa following the 17th of April 1975 and what happened to them? After the uh, Phnom Penh took control of, uh, after the Khmer Rouge took control of Phnom Penh on the 17th April, I myself was not in uh, Tram Corp district, so I did not know what happened in that uh, district. When did you return to Tram Corp district after the 17th of April, 75? When was it that you came back to Tram Corp? did not work and stayed in Tramco because I myself always was attached to Regiment 13 of Division 210. Where was Regiment 13 based? Where did you work? Where were you located when you were a soldier in Regiment 13? We did not have any one particular base as we were constantly uh, transferred to other locations. Are you able to give us any uh, general description of where you were normally located in the period after 17 April 1975? for the remainder of that year and into 1976. From 1975, that is probably a month after, I was uh, transferred to uh, Phnom Noriye on the Riei Mountain and then to 
Kohandai district in Kiri Vung and to engage in rice farming there. And there were various locations within that area that I, I did uh, rice farming, but I cannot recall them all. Uh, I'm going to now uh, turn to the period uh, that you worked at Krang Tachan. Um, but let me just follow up on your last question. Um, uh, was there any period prior to the time uh, that you were assigned to Krang Tachan where you were working in Tramkok District or uh, was the first time you were sent to Tramkok District when you received your assignment at Krang Tachan? No. Did not. Okay, I first want to uh, cover with you uh, the time period uh, that you were at Krang Tachan. In your third OCIJ interview, E319.1.25, at answer three, you were asked question, when did you start working in Krang Tachan? And your response was, quote, in 1976 or 1977. In your other statements, you had said it was 1977 when you were assigned to Krang Tachan. Uh, but also in a statement D232 slash 93 at answer three, you also indicated that there were six others or that you were part of a group of six that was sent to Krang Tachan at the same time of you, a group that included a person named Sim and a person named Son. Can you tell us the, the, the group of six that you were assigned to Krang Tachan with were you all from the same unit? Amongst the six of us, we were assigned to get at the Krang Tachan office. And my question is, prior to the time you were assigned to Krang Tachan, were these uh, other people part of the same unit as you prior to the time you came to Krang Tachan? Yes, we were in the same unit. Mr. President, at this time, uh, I would like the witness to look at two OCIJ statements, uh, D40-20 and E319.1.33. These are statements of two other witnesses who I will not name, and I would ask the witness not to name. Uh, I want him to look at the uh, initial pages of these statements and tell us whether <laughs> these two persons were part of the group that went to Krang Tachan with him. So with your leave, if I can provide these statements and the witness and his counsel should understand, we do not want him to publicly read the names of these people. Yes, uh, you can do that. And the court officer, please deliver the document from the Deputy International Co Prosecutor for the uh, witness examination. So it's clear. My question for you, Mr. Witness, is to uh, on the initial pages of these statements, 
uh, contain the names and identifying uh, information about these individuals. If you could look at uh, that information for both individuals, my question is whether these two persons were part of the group that was sent to Krang to Chan at the same time as you. Yes. Sang and Sim were from the same unit. Now, um, the first person uh, in D40 slash 20, referring to Khmer page 00165329, English 00433568, French 00524317. That person indicates uh, that he was sent to Krang Tachan during the rice harvest in 1976. The second person who you've identified as being assigned to Krang Tachan at the same time as you, and this is in E319. Point one point three three at answer 15, that person testified that he was assigned to be a guard at Krang Tachan in October or November 1976. Does this refresh your recollection that it was late 1976 and not 1977 when you were assigned to Krang Tachan? In late 1976, I uh, was uh, transferred, but not to a Kantachan prison. It was to the Kantachan, but at the outer fence of Kantachan, which was about one kilometer from the main uh, compound itself. Thank you uh, for clarifying that, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, in regards to the function of Krang Tachan, you made the following statement in interview D125-129, and the page references are Khmer 00224789, English 00231674 and French 00234575, where you said the following quote Krang Tachan was a re education office. I heard people talking to one another say that a re-education office was a site to kill people and that those people brought into the site could not live, meaning that they all died." End of quote. Can you tell us um, who, who it was that you heard describe what a re-education office was? Answer. I heard from villagers saying that the uh, security center in Tramcock was the killing site at the time. Can you tell us during the time, the entire time that you worked at Krang Tachan, at the Krang Tachan Re Education Center, were there any teachers there? Witness, there was no teacher.
Now, you have described, and you made a reference to this, you've described in your OCIJ interviews uh, how you initially worked as an outside or external guard at Krang Tachan, but later were assigned to work inside the compound and to help type documents for the prison chairman. And uh, I want to first uh, ask you some questions about how prisoners arrived at Krang Tachan uh, during the entire time you were there. That is, the period both that you were working outside the prison and the period you were working inside. Uh, in your interview, D125-129, at Khmer 00-22-4789, English 00231674 and French 00234575. You describe how people who had been arrested were, and I quote, walked in with their arms tied tightly behind their backs, end of quote. Can you first tell us who it was that brought the arrested people to Krang Tachan with their arms tied tightly behind their back? Answer. When those people were sent in, I don't know who made the arrest, but um, the commune, uh, the people from the commune and from um, uh, the commune who sent those people in. Are, are you saying uh, that it was commune militia who brought the prisoners? My question is specifically about who the people were uh, who brought them to the outside of Krang Tachan. Answer. They were not arrested by the commune militiamen. Uh, the prisoners were tied up and sent, but I don't know who made the arrest of those uh, prisoners. Let, let me uh, clarify again. I'm not asking you who arrested them. What I'm asking you is who were the people who brought them to Krang Tachan, who delivered the prisoners to the Krang Tachan area. Answer, those who brought them in were the commune, uh, the, the commune with chairman. Mr. Witness, um, a book uh, that was written by an individual named Meng Tri Yi um, that is in evidence in this case, and I'm referring to document E3-2120, E3-2120. Uh, this book uh, refers to interviews uh, that Meng Tri E conducted in December 2000 and October 2001 of a person who he identifies as, and I quote, Sok Chanta, aka Deutsch, former Tramcock District Reeducation Center typist cadre. My question to you is. Uh, do you remember being interviewed about Krang Tachan in 2000 or 2001 uh, by a person named Meng Tri Yi? Respond, no, I don't remember. Uh, have you ever used the name Sok Chanta as an alias?
answer, no, I never use this name. Let me uh, uh, read to you a short uh, excerpt uh, to see if that refreshes your recollection. Uh, in this book, E3, uh, 2120, uh, and the excerpt is at English 00416390. Uh, the, these excerpts have not been translated. The translations haven't been completed yet. Uh, so I will just read them into the record. We've made requests for the translations. Uh, at this page, uh, the following statement is made. Uh, and it's attributed to the person who he interviewed uh, that he identifies as a typist from Krang to Chan with the alias Deutsch and to a guard named Sang. These former cadres reported that its prisoner escorts rang a bell that hung from a mango tree just west of the center. Upon hearing the bell, the cadres came out to meet the prisoners and led them to cells inside." End of quote. Um, first, was there a bell outside the Krang Tachan comp compound that was rung by the militia when they arrived with prisoners? Answer, no, there was no bell. I'm now going to turn to some questions about the number of prisoners detained at Krang Tachan. In your interview, uh, D232-93, at answers 19 through answer 20, you gave the following testimony. Question. While being sent, were prisoners blindfolded? Answer, they were not blindfolded, but only their hands were tied. Each time when prisoners were tied and walked, there were about five to six of them who were tied and walked one after another. Question, how many prisoners were there to the max maximum? Answer, Sometimes there were 20 people, sometimes there were three or four people. The first thing, end of quote, the first thing I wanted to clarify, when you referred to a maximum of 20 prisoners, to, to what were you referring? Were you referring to the most prisoners who would arrive on any day were you referring to the maximum capacity of the prison? What were you referring to when you referenced there being uh, sometimes 20 prisoners? Answer. My response saying that um, 20 people or four people, it based on a particular day that uh, the prisoner was sent uh, for that day. But it does not happen uh, every day. So just to clarify, you were talking about the arrivals of prisoners. Is that right? Answer, yes. Uh, we've heard a testimony in this trial um, from a witness, a civil party, excuse me, a Sai Sen. Uh, he has uh, described how there were originally 
two buildings for detention of prisoners, but that during the period of democratic Kampuchea, sometime after 17 April 1975, an additional two buildings were built. And my first question for, for you is, uh, do you recall uh, that the number of buildings uh, at Krang Tachan that could be used for the detention of prisoners? And can you give us uh, an estimate of the capacity of each of those buildings? How many prisoners could be held in each detention building? And so the prisoners building, there were two buildings in Krang Tachan. Each building could have about 50 to 60 prisoners. Let me just um, come back to this one once, uh, and I'll, let me make the reference. Uh, this is the testimony of Sai Sen uh, at E1 slash 257.1. That is the trial transcript for the 5th of February 2015 at approximately 10, 50, uh, 53. Uh, he described how, because of the increased number of prisoners, they built two more buildings, which he described as being to the east of the compound. Does that refresh your recollection? Do you remember there being two additional buildings that may, were not inside the immediate uh, or the inside compound, but were built just outside it? Answer. Um, I don't remember the number previously, but when I arrived, there was uh, there were only two buildings, one in uh, the west and another one uh, to the east. <coughs> one of the uh, uh, documents uh, in evidence this trial is a report. Uh, for the month of November 1977 uh, from the prison. And with your leave, Mr. President, I would like to provide this document to the witness and display it on the screen. It is document E3 slash 2109 at Khmer page 00068014. English 00276555 and French 00290272. With your leave, Mr. President, may I provide this to the witness and display it on the screen? The President, your request is granted. Um, Mr. Witness, I would direct you to the what is paragraph one of this document. And if we could show that part on the screen, uh, it is a report regarding uh, the prisoner numbers for the month of November 1977. It states that 75 new prisoners entered that month, that 92 prisoners were purged, six died of illness, and one, a lieutenant colonel, was removed to sector by Ankar, leaving a total of 85 prisoners as of the end of the month. My first question is, do you remember 
reports like this being prepared on a monthly basis. Answer. No, there was no uh, such report. Do you recognize the handwriting in this document? Yes, I uh, recognize, I, re I recall. Um, this handwriting was uh, done by Deutsch. And when you refer to Deutsch, who are you referring to? Respond. I refer to Deutsch, who was the deputy of the chief name Anne. Just so the record is clear, Mr. Witness, there were two cadres uh, at Krang Tachan uh, who had the alias or name Deutsch. There was yourself, and then there was also the person who you just identified as the deputy of the prison chief. Am I correct? Answer, yes, you are correct. This um, report uh, states that one person, a lieutenant colonel, had been removed to sector by Ankar. Can you tell us what did it mean uh, for a prisoner to be removed to sector? Answer, I don't understand. Was there a security office for the sector in which Tramcock District was located. Answer, I don't know about that. Let me just follow up with one more question. Were you ever aware uh, at any time of prisoners being transferred from Krang to Chan to other prisons? Answer, yes. There were um, a sending of the prisoner to other place, but I don't know uh, whether there, there were other prisons. I don't know what happened or their destination. Uh, how often were prisoners transferred to other sites? Answer, it was not very often when they were sent. It happened late 1978 and early 1979. And do you have any information uh, as to where it was that these prisoners were sent in late 78 or early 79? Answer, I don't know their destination. I made a reference uh, a little while ago to the testimony of one of the civil parties 
uh, who we have heard, uh, a man named Sai Sen. Um, in your OCIJ statement, uh, D125-129, at Khmer 00224789, Nine zero through nine one, English zero zero two three one six seven five, and French zero zero two three four five seven six. Uh, in that statement, you identified Sai Sen as one of the surviving prisoners from Krang Tachan. Uh, can you confirm? that Sai Sen was a prisoner at Krang Tachan during the entire time you worked there? Answer. Sai Sen was actually the former prisoner at Krang Tachan, but I don't know when he was sent to that uh, prison. Upon my arrival, I saw him was already there. So you've uh, just confirmed that Sai Sen was there when you arrived. Did he remain a prisoner at Krang Tachan during the time that you worked there? Uh, I think the President, um, please wait, Mr. Witness. Mr. Victor Kope, you may proceed. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm not sure I heard something different, I think, than uh, the prosecution. I heard the witness say that he was a former prisoner. Um, so asking the question back, he was a prisoner, is not reflecting the, the testimony. I heard him say that he was a former prisoner. And then he said he was there when I arrived at Krang Tachan. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that he's a prisoner, does it? Okay. Let, let me clarify it. When you said that Sai Sen was at Krang Tachan when you arrived in late 1976, was he a prisoner? Answer. Upon my arrival in, in early 1977, I saw Soi Sen in Krang Tachan prison, but he was uh, let out to work outside to do cooking in that prison. And when you say he was let out to do cooking, was that during the daytime? And what did he do at nighttime? Answer. At night, he was uh, sent to detain in the prison. And did Mr. Sai Sen remain at Krang Tachan the entire time you were there? Answer. When I was working at Krang Tachan for about one year, and Soi Sen was always there. I'd now like to turn to a, a different subject, um, the a subject of interrogations of prisoners at Krang Tachan. And in your OCIJ statement, a D-125, slash 129 at ERN Khmer 00224790, English 00231675, and French 00234576. You provided the following testimony. And I quote, 
I saw them take prisoners for beatings and interrogations every single day at the interrogation room approximately 50 meters from the building where I worked. I heard the prisoners' screams coming from the interrogation room. Can I start by having you describe for us uh, where the interrogation room was located in the Krang Tachan compound? Matt, the interrogation room was located right within the compound of a Kantachan prison. Mr. President, with your leave, uh, I'd like to provide to the witness uh, at this time uh, document D125 slash 220.37. That's D125 slash 220.37. And this is the OCIJ map or diagram of the Krang Chung compound. Uh, with your leave, I'd like to provide that to the witness and show it on the screen. Yes, the chamber allows that. And Mr. Witness, if you could look at this diagram and if we can show it on the screen, uh, can you tell us, uh, and I direct you to the um, bottom half of the uh, compound map, there is a building that's identified as the interrogation house towards the south side of the compound. Uh, can you tell us, does this map accurately show the location of the interrogation house at Krang Tachan? When I was there, it was not located at the location shown on this sketch. Can you tell us where you believe it was located uh, in relation to where it is shown on this map? I cannot recall it uh, exactly. But uh, to me, it was not at the location as shown on this sketch. Let me ask you a, try to uh, follow up on that. Um, do you remember there being a kitchen or dining hall for the guards that lo was located next to or nearby the interrogation room. Ma no, there was none. Was there a separate dining hall for the guards, a separate place from where the prisoners ate? There was no dining hall for uh, prisoners. Let's, let me ask you a open question then. Where was it that the guards ate their meals in the prison compound? And where was it that the prisoners ate their meals? I 
Whereas again, and for the six of us in a unit, we ate uh, separately from the uh, prisoners. And as for us, there was no uh, set uh, dining area. Some days we ate here, and next day we ate there. L let me be clear. I'm asking you about the period where you were located and working inside the prison compound a period where you indicate you were helping to type documents. During that period, where was it that you would eat your meals? At that time, I was having my meal within uh, my uh, unit. And where did prisoners uh, eat meals? As for prisoners, they had their meal in the detention building. I want to make sure that I'm not having a translation issue here. So instead of dining hall, I'm going to ask you about the kitchen, kitchens at the compound. Were there kitchens at the Krankachan compound? And if so, where were they located? Yes, there was a kitchen, but it was old, so they no, no longer use it by the time I uh, arrived. And so where was it in the compound that meals were cooked? It is uh, difficult for me to, to respond to your questions because, uh, as I said earlier, uh, cooking was done at various uh, locations. There was no, no fixed uh, kitchen or dining hall or a set, uh, a set of uh, cooking uh, utensils. And let me clarify that we, the GAT unit comprising of six, we hate our own uh, cooking. Before I finish this, uh, this uh, the subject of the kitchens and 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 where you ate meals was, you said that you ate together with your unit of six. Uh, during the time you were working inside the compound, was there a a building or a specific location where you and the other guards ate your meals? My unit, that is the six of us, in terms of guarding the, the two buildings, one to the east and one to the west, three of us would guard each building. And as for a meal time, sometimes we went to eat at the east building or sometimes at the west building. Let me move on to another uh, subject. Um, well, let, let me ask you. Uh, President interrupts. The time is uh, appropriate for our lunch break. And uh, before we break, the chamber would like to inform the prosecution and the political lawyers for civil parties that you will have this entire afternoon to put the questions to this uh, witness. 
the chamber also uh, ruled on the request for the protective measure as follows. The chamber has granted protective measures for the witness through TCW944, including non-disclosure of his address and not making his image available to the public. In covering this trial, the media are ordered not to publish any photographs or images of the witness, regardless of when they were taken. It is now appropriate for a, a lunch break. President, as for today's proceedings, the chamber will adjourn uh, now and will resume on the uh, 23rd February 2015, commencing from 9 o'clock in the morning. And Mr. Witness, the hearing of your testimony is not yet concluded and you are invited to return on the 23rd of February 2015, starting from 9 o'clock in the morning. And this also applies to the duty council. And uh, duty council, uh, Mr. Doj Perry, you uh, can proceed. Uh, Mr. President, as I have uh, notified the WISU that on Monday, the 23rd of February 2015, I am not available for the morning session and I am only available for the afternoon of that day. Thank you, Mr. President. President, uh, thank you, Duty Council, for the information, as we have not uh, received that information uh, previously. And uh, we will try to assign another Duty Council during your uh, unavailability on that morning. And as uh, we stated, uh, Mr. Uh, witness, please uh, return on the 23rd February 2015, and you may now leave the court to return to wherever you wish to uh, to your uh, place of residence. And this information also applies to all the uh, parties to the case. And I will, we will resume it on the 23rd of February 2015. And court officer, in collaboration with WISU, please make a necessary transportation arrangement for this witness to return to his place of residence and have him return to the court in order to continue his testimony on the 23rd of February 2015 before 9 o'clock in the morning. Security guards, you are instructed to take Nuji and Kyusampon to the detention facility and have them return to participate in the proceedings on 23rd February 2015 before 9 o'clock. The court is now adjourned.
xong trên cầu chờ